Now, I'm not going to lie to you. Last week felt a lot worse than it actually was. And that's mostly because my dumbass thought that, hey, heading into week one, some of these teams that were really bad last year might not be as bad this year. Carolina, New York, disgusting games. And I'm stupider for making those decisions. But still, we actually went 9-6-1 and one when all things are said and done. We swept the afternoon slate on Sunday. We won the Thursday game, won the Sunday night game, won the Friday game. So it could be worse. Plus, week one is super volatile. Going into week two, let's tighten things up a little bit. Don't be like me. Don't be stupid. But like I said, not too bad. Plus, if you were in the Discord, we hit a Mike Evans two-plus touchdowns at 9-1. to one. We hit Saquon Barkley plus 425 to have 100-plus rushing yards. And we hit a plus 604 anytime touchdown parlay with Jamison Williams and Cooper Cup. So if you want to join, link is down there. 50% off your first week or month. That's less than 5 bucks a week, 15 bucks a month. Hit me up in the Discord. Say what's up. We'd love to have you guys over there. We had a great week one, and we're looking to run it back for week two. But this time, let's be a little carefuler with the spreads. Hey, I'm Dave Lochran, and these are picks for every game in week two. As always, hit me up over on Twitter or X at Lafay underscore D right there for any news, analysis, updates. You got it. And random stuff like a snake that I found in my basement yesterday and had to kill. This is a true story. I'll see you over there. Let's get it going there. Thursday night football. Bills at the Dolphins. Bills are two and a half point dogs here, 49 point total. I know the Dolphins are going to be the popular play. I totally get it. You know, they're inside of a field goal at home. All of that makes sense. But Josh Allen's been so good, so good against the Dolphins and against Tua. This guy's 10 and two against Miami for his career. He's six and one all time straight up against Tua. He's carved him up. And the only game he lost, you remember this a couple of years ago in 2022, early in the year, where it was 90 plus degrees in Miami and humid and all of the Bills players were dropping like flies, getting IV, getting fluids, getting cramps worked out on the side, like just, legit just dropping. Allen threw 63 times or whatever. That's actually the number. 63 times in that game. Um, yeah, it's going to be 81 degrees. Moderate humidity, not that bad. Maybe a little bit of cloud cover. And I know Miami bolstered their secondary coming into this season, and, and the Bills retooled their offense, losing Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis in the process. But it's still hard for me to ignore what Allen has done to this team. I mean, the Dolphins will probably be the popular team this week because you're getting them inside a field goal, right? As I mentioned, not because just people love the Dolphins, but I just kind of hate betting against Allen in this matchup. Raheem Mostert's already out for Miami. Devon Achan appears to be a legitimate game time decision. They had a little walkthrough today. I record this on Wednesday afternoon, but that doesn't mean he's going to play. And I know Buffalo has some defensive you know, injuries and all things being equal, though, I kind of just have to bet on Allen. And, you know, if you don't like this, because give me Bills plus two and a half. If you don't like this and you're looking for something else, uh, we already hit this in the Discord earlier in the week. I think it was on Monday. Um, Josh Allen over 245 and a half passing yards. Here's why. This guy in his last five games since back to since 2022, including the playoffs against Miami, forget about the pass catches for a second. 400, 304, 352, 320, and 359 passing yards for Josh Allen. The line has moved a little bit, like I said, but at 345 and a half, or sorry, 245 and a half, let's get on that as well. Especially if you don't like a side in this game, and you just think Allen can produce like I do, that's where I'm going to go. Raiders at the Ravens. Ravens, nine-point favorites, uh, 41 and a half point total. The Ravens should win this game easily. I mean, the only question now is, is how much will their offensive line struggles affect them in this spot, right? Because last week it was an issue, but they st it still came down to the final play of the game. A crazy ending. Uh, and the Raiders have a good pass rush. It's clearly the best aspect of this team in general. But who is better at evading a pass rush than Lamar Jackson? You know, and you also have Derrick Henry that can kind of just bruise his way to yardage in a game like this, especially where you don't have to abandon the run when you're facing a Chiefs team. You're facing Gardner Minshew and the, the, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders, and you do have a good secondary, despite what it may not have looked like last week, again, against just the juggernaut offense in Kansas City. And when you consider it, the Raiders allowed 176 rushing yards, six and a half yards per attempt last week to J.K. Dobbins, mostly J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards and the Chargers. Things start to look pretty good for Baltimore at home. 
Also, Antonio Pierce did not call a good game. Uh, you cannot be calling bad games as a head coach when this is your team, right? You don't have an elite enough team on either side of the field to be making mistakes as a play caller. And I wish this was a better teaser spot for sure because I don't see the Ravens losing this game, you know, the home opener under John Harbaugh. But my favorite spot's actually Ravens over 25 and a half points. And if you want, Mark Andrews anytime touchdown is plus 290 on DraftKings. In my opinion, the market has just soured way too much on Mark Andrews after one football game. The Kansas City Chiefs and Spagnola, these guys have been doubling Andrews every time he's faced them. This is actually nothing new, right? They've always doubled Andrews. Look at his production. Go look at the game logs for Mark Andrews and his production against the Chiefs. It's been terrible. So, I mean, plus two, Isaiah Likely is a plus 265. So you're telling me that in one game, Isaiah Likely now has shorter touchdown odds than Mark Andrews. And Mark Andrews, two plus touchdown odds are plus 3,000 on FanDuel. This guy had two, two touchdowns in two of 10 games last season. So I'll be sprinkling there. I'll be looking at Andrews' touchdown. I just think the, the market soured way too much on him after one solitary game. Saints at the Cowboys. Cowboys, six and a half point favorites, 45 and a half point total here. We'll focus on the spread. Look, allow me to wipe the egg off of my face, stare directly at you through the camera, and tell you that despite what we saw last week, I am still not a believer in Dennis Allen or Derek Carr or this Saints team. And maybe I'll look dumb again. But Carr is going to face a shit ton more pressure than he did last week in Carolina. Get this. He was literally pressured three times. Three times. In the entire game. Tyrod Taylor was pressured three times. And he played for like four minutes in garbage time against the 49ers. Meanwhile, the Cowboys got pressure on Deshaun Watson 42% of the time. 24 pressures, more than any quarterback in football last week. The Cowboys are just a better team. They can lock down far better on defense than the Carolina Panthers. And they have a functioning offense. They're at home for their home opener. Give me Cowboys minus six and a half. 49ers at the Vikings. All right, so I, I think it, feel, it feels like, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to be backing a decent amount of favorites today, but there are some teaser spots that we're going to talk about, and this may be one of them later, so stay tuned. But uh, Sam Darnold lit up the Giants in week one. Like I said, you know, the two spots, the two spots I wish I could take back. Admittedly, bad reads, okay? I know it. I know it. I know it. Bad reads. Carolina and the Giants. For sure. I really, I, Carolina was like a begrudging, hey, I hate the Saints. The Giants, I really thought could win that game. And it was at no point competitive. Daniel Jones was terrible. All right. So my sincerest apologies. Sam Donald crushed them. Uh, and I think it's fair to say we have to respect Kevin O'Connell. But Kyle Shanahan's just also a genius. You know, he knew Christian McCaffrey wasn't starting. Jordan Mason shouldn't have said anything, but he knew he wasn't starting. He didn't announce it till later because why not? 4D chess style. They're preparing for Christian McCaffrey and then boom, he's not playing. When I saw the news break so close to kickoff, I knew I should have gotten off of the Jets, but I did it because I got a better number. I got closing line value, you know, four and a half, lose the three and a half. I was like, I got to keep it. Stupid, but still. And I don't know if McCaffrey plays this week. It looks like an uphill battle, but Jordan Mason was fantastic against the Jets anyway, which should have been a good run defense. And unlike the Giants, the Niners have an elite secondary for sure. I don't want to overreact from one week, okay? But if in August I told you that the Niners were six-point favorites against the Vikings, you'd probably be all over it. You probably would. Not a top game. This is a lean. 49ers minus six. Give me that. Chargers at the Panthers. Chargers minus six and a half here. 38 and a half point total. All right, so Bryce Young and the Panthers may have actually gone backwards from where they were last season. I can't wait to just put all of this in the rearview mirror. That was a pit, that, that was such a pitiful display of football or what was supposed to be considered football for 60 straight minutes. I mean, when you can make Dennis Allen and Derek Carr look like the best in the league at their respective jobs, you know you've hit rock bottom, right? Like it's, it doesn't get it actually doesn't get any worse than that, for sure. Unless maybe if you're the Bengals at home against the Patriots. Uh, you know, we battle against Carolina almost every year last year. I think we just need to go back to it. Look, six and a half is though a lot to lay on the Chargers because we don't really know about this team yet, right? We don't, 
they're on the road traveling west coast to to east coast uh justin herbert dealing with the the foot you know the plantar fascia it didn't look 100 percent last week but managed he was fine he, dude's a warrior so it's it's not because carolina is not awful they are but i think there's a lot of other things where it's like man laying almost a touchdown on the road i like the chargers as a six point teaser though um here we're just betting them to win and jim harbaugh wins he's 50 22 and one straight up as an nfl head coach and I trust that unlike all of the other recent Chargers coaches who have constantly found ways to lose one possession games, he isn't going to drop this game to Bryce Young and the Panthers. A six-point teaser with the 49ers in a six-point teaser gets you half-point spread on the Chargers, and it gets you a pick -em on the Niners. And if you do that on DraftKings right now, that's minus 120. Those are odds I really like. So both of those games, I'm teasing them together, getting that minus 120, essentially two pick -em spots for the Chargers and the 49ers. Colts at the Packers. Ready to get gross? That worked out so well for us last week, didn't it? 40 and a half point total. Packers are three and a half point home dogs. Colts, I think minus three and a half is probably going to be really chalky this week. It makes sense. Malik Willis is not good. And Replacing Jordan Love is a, is a really big deal. Love looked good last week outside of a couple of mistakes, but it was in Brazil with that shitty field. Can't be happy about that. But LaFleur has time to game plan for this. They traded for Malik Willis recently, but he was the backup last week, came in on that final play when Jordan Love got hurt. And that's helpful when you have, when you have guys like Jaden Reed in the offense, that's really helpful. Like the expectation for me isn't that Willis is going to be good, but that LaFleur can mask his deficiencies enough to where this is actually a competitive game and they won't be completely dead. And before you click out, at least at least hear me out on this, right? At least, at least indulge me. Matt LaFleur, as the head coach of the Packers, is 32-9 and nine at home. I know he's had Rodgers, right? I know I know he had Rodgers and, and Jordan Love. But even, even early last year, they were good at home and Jordan Love wasn't good. I'm not betting him to win, but I wouldn't be surprised at all if this game stays competitive. And Anthony Richardson, we all know, he can run as good as anybody, but he missed some wide-open receivers last week. Like, he only threw 19 times, but he might, he missed um, Adonai, Mitchell, Adonai Mitchell twice downfield, a couple deep balls that he missed, left a lot of points on the board. And Green Bay also has a much better defense than we saw last week. Like that's a that's a buzzsaw offense for the Philadelphia Eagles now that Saquon Barkley is involved. Jalen Hurts didn't play well and they still put up 34 points. Yeah, look, there's 16 games. You don't need to bet any of these. You don't need to tail me on any of the any of these. As a matter of fact, what I would recommend, like I said, hit me up uh, on Tails by Odd Shopper with the link in the description because it's just less than five bucks a week if you hate it you go hey i don't like this guy i'm gone less than 15 bucks a month and get in on some of the goods that we had last week because we have spreads here spreads are hard to win like spreads are hard just on an individual basis to win i love targeting the prop game i love targeting the prop market where you're getting what nine ten to one on mike evans two plus touchdowns against what was the worst secondary in football last year those are the things we're trying to unearth and find those type of beauties right and this just sets us up for the week and puts us in a good spot to be like, all right, now we have a foundation for all of these games. Let's dig deeper. And that's what we do in there. So again, love to have you over there. But listen, with this, with a spot like this, Packers plus three and a half makes sense. You don't have to bet it. You don't like it. No big deal. But you know Matt LaFleur is damn good at home. Seahawks at the Patriots. Seahawks minus three, 37 and a half point total. I'm going to try and just not overthink this game, okay? You guys tell me where you're at in the comments as well. I read all of them, respond to all as many as I can. Um, by the way, thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Appreciate you. I, I don't want to overthink this because, you know, like the first question is, how much impact can Ramondre Stevenson make again? Because he was amazing against the Bengals. But that Bengals defense is suspect. Patriots don't have quality pass catchers. K.J. Osborne was their number one last week, and... It feels like the type of games where the Patriots kind of look as bad as they were expected to look before the season started. And I think it's fair to say that their defense isn't going to be that bad, but they were the biggest dog of the week to kick off the, to kick off the season. And they shocked everyone with a 16-10 win over the Bengals. But are we thinking they go 2 and 0, you know, out of the gate with, with with the type of team specifically on offense that that they have I'm just not buying it, man. And don't get me wrong. We, we bet the uh, the Bengals under on their point total, and that hit easily, right? It was under 24 and a half. They scored 10. Uh, and I didn't want to touch them as big favorites either. 
But even with this game being a West Coast to East Coast road spot, do we genuinely see ways the Patriots are going to be able to score uh, against this Mike McDonald-led defense? That's the thing I keep running into. Keep an eye on Kenneth Walker's status, but even so, Seahawks minus three. Bucks at the Lions. Lions laying seven, 51 and a half point total. This line feels exactly where it should be. Um, a lot are like it's exactly where it should be. A lot of people are, are are low on Tampa this year, and that's probably fair. Last week against Washington is not the best litmus test ever. You guys know all last year. And yes, last week I spent like five minutes talking about how bad they were and how we were going to have Tampa props in the Discord, uh, which we did. But, like, you know, it's not a good litmus test. Washington's secondary is terrible. Um, Baker looked good, though. And, and Detroit's primary weakness has to be their secondary still. It's not as bad as it's been, I don't think. But their pass rush is elite. Their run defense is elite. And they're stacked on offense. That's elite. Not to mention, now we're we're witnessing the emergence of Jamison Williams, who looked phenomenal on Sunday Night Football. In the end, though, I mean, from top to bottom, this is just a better team, a much better team in Detroit. And that's that's what I keep coming back to. Like I, sometimes I try not to overthink things. We're like, oh, you're betting too many favorites, or you're betting too many dogs. I haven't bet it yet, but I would lean Detroit. If you can find the six and a half, that would be huge. If I could find the six and a half on Detroit, I would love it. Also, Mike Evans anytime touchdown. Again, I told you we hit the two plus last week. Anytime touchdown at plus 125 right now on DraftKings, just much better than any other book. And he's clearly Baker's favorite red zone target. This game's got a 51 and a half point total, and they might be playing from behind early and throwing a lot. Lock in Mike Evans as somebody that's going to see those targets once they get inside the 10 or even the 20 for that matter. Giants at the commanders. All right. Um, both of these teams disgust me. Although at least, you know, we leaned Bucks last week and had good stuff there. But from the perspective of having to bet one of these teams on Sunday, I'm just good. The commanders still appear to have the worst pass defense in football. Uh, maybe the Lions are just as bad, as a matter of fact. And Jaden Daniels was running every time he sensed any pressure whatsoever. And the Giants can actually bring some pressure. Daniel Jones was just flat out garbage for 60 minutes, too. I mean, it doesn't get any worse than that. Here's what I'm going to do, though. Malik Neighbors over 64 and a half receiving yards on FanDuel. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, you just said Daniel Jones is dog shit. And you would be correct in that I said that and that I also believe that. But Neighbors played 100% of snaps last week. He ran a route on 100% of dropbacks. And Washington's secondary is downright horrid. Even with Jones' terrible performance, Neighbors still went for 66 yards last week against a much better Vikings defense. So if I'm betting this game, I already bet this. Give me Malik Neighbors over 64 and a half receiving yards on FanDuel at minus 114 because he's going to be on the field all game. And when you get plays like that, you take them. Jets at the Titans. All right. This is one where I don't regret at all taking the Titans last week. As a matter of fact, I think that was for sure the right read. They had a 17-point lead. Caleb Williams was terrible. And he didn't, the, the Bears didn't have an offensive touchdown. Not only did Will Levis figure out how to blow a 17-point lead, he figured out how to, lo to, to, to lose against the spread as a four-and-a-half-point dog up by 17 when the opponent did not score a touchdown all game. So I'll, I'll bet that 1,000 times out of 1,000 every time over again. What a disappointment that was, though. But hey, listen, Kyle Shanahan last week outclassed this Jets team at every turn, and the Jets' run defense was a real problem. I can't ignore the personnel, though, on this Jets team compared to the Titans. I know they got Legereus Sneed. They've got some bodies on defense, you know, a pretty big behemoth defensive line that can slow down the run. If I'm wrong again, though, this week, I'm willing to reevaluate everything with the Jets, okay? You have my word on that. But right now, I still think this is a much better team than the Titans. Like I said, Will Levis found a way to blow that. Not the lead, but also the spread. And the Bears did not score a single touchdown. Also, he got picked off twice. He lost a fumble. The Jets secondary is, is fantastic. I, I know that. We know that. Their pass rush is well above average, even without Hassan Reddick. I think they're able to handle Will Levis here. I think it's a bounce back. Rodgers has another game under his belt since returning to action. And... 
they can't win, like I said, I'll go back to the drawing board. Browns at the Jags, 41 and a half point total. Jags are three and a half point favorites. Ooh, I had a tough time with this one. We were right about Dallas last week, right? We had Dallas plus two and a half on the road. They routed Deshaun Watson and the Browns. Deshaun is bad, and that game was never competitive. You can say everything you want about the banged up offensive line, and to some extent, you'd be justified. He was under pressure more than anyone in the league last week and completed 33% of passes under pressure. Terrible. But even with a clean pocket, he threw two picks, still looked terrible. He had the third worst passer rating uh, with a clean pocket last week behind only Bryce Young and Daniel Jones. The only thing keeping me from pulling the trigger on the Jags right now, because you can get them at three. So if you want the Jags, get them at three. If you want the Browns, get them at three and a half for sure. Is that Jack Conklin and Jed Jedrick Wills, I think they're going to be back. Both of them practice today on Wednesday. There's some threes out there, some threes and a half. Pick your spot. But if you think getting the O-line healthy is enough to keep things competitive for Watson, especially considering the Browns do have one of the best defensive uh, defenses in football, that's where you got to take it. For me right now, I'm leaning Browns three and a half, and you can get that at a few books, but over at Bet365, where I hit it, you're getting $200 in bonus bets just by betting $5 on whatever you want. If you're in one of these states, pause it, take a look. You deposit 10 with the link in the description. You bet only $5. That is it. And the moment after that bet settles, even if it's a live bet, like a live in-game drive bet, which I wouldn't recommend, but the moment that settles, you have $200 in bonus bets injected straight into your account to do with it as you please. If there's one thing in sports betting, you take advantage of every promo given to you across every book and rack up the bonus bets, rack up the, the risk-free spots, all of that. And right now at Bet365, if you're in one of those states, you bet five and get 200 instantly when it settles. 21 years or older to gamble. If you have a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. But back to the game. This is a tough spot because while Watson is not good, the Jags do not have a very good pass rush. And the defense is suspect as well. Kevin Stefanski is a good coach, and I've gone back and forth a lot here, but I think Cleveland plus three and a half is actually going to be the play for me. I just don't see this game getting out of hand like we saw last week against a much better Cowboys team. And if that offensive line is bolstered, you're going to eliminate a lot of that pressure and not going up against what we... Dallas has a, a menacing pass rush. Micah Parsons and a bunch of guys. This is actually a better spot for Watson. I'm not saying he wins them the game, but I'm saying that he might not lose them the game here and the offensive line and defense keep this close so we get the Browns outside of a field goal. Rams at the Cardinals. Cardinals laying a point and a half, 49 point total. Sean McVay's Rams took the Lions to overtime last week without Puka Nakua and terrible pass blocking. I mean, terrible. And that's against a Detroit team that has a ridiculous pass rush led by uh, Aiden Hutchinson. The, the Cardinals have no pass rush at all. And Darius Robinson, who they drafted in the first round, he's on the IR. And they finished week one with the lowest pass rush win rate of any team, the lowest pass rush grade, if you look at PFF, some people don't, outside of the Panthers. So despite the O-line issues for LA, um, oh, and by the way, the Cardinals just lost one of their starting offensive linemen as well. Despite the O-line issues, Stafford should be afforded a lot more time to throw uh, in this game against the secondary that doesn't scare anybody in Arizona. And, 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 you know, this Arizona defense at the end of the year, I think you're going to be looking at a bottom of the barrel defense, uh, including their run defense. So I like the Rams over 23 and a half points on DraftKings. That's kind of a fun spot because it's a one and a half point spread pretty evenly matched. And the Rams run defense does, didn't look great. Their secondary is still solid. So I would lean Rams plus one and a half, but I actually like over 23 and a half more. You get that. Now you're talking 24 points, three touchdowns and a field goal gets us there. I think both teams put points on the board, but with no more Aaron jo uh, Aaron Donald, the Rams' D-line isn't nearly as imposing as it once was. And Kyler Murray does have some weapons now. You would expect them to use Marvin Harrison Jr. more, Trey McBride, James Conner. They got some guys, and Murray's great at keeping plays alive. But I give the Rams a slight advantage. Lean plus one and a half and over 23 and a half points. Bengals at the Chiefs. Oh, man, what a game to talk about. 47 and a half point total. The Chiefs are six point favorites. And I know after what we saw last week, people are going to have a really tough time taking the points with the Bengals, for sure. But man, Joe Burrow has played so well against the Chiefs, no matter what, throughout his career. I mean, you're like, okay, no T. Higgins, probably. 
the Chiefs could get Hollywood Brown back. How do you not just hammer them? Four games that he's played against the Chiefs. The Bengals won by three. The Bengals won by three in overtime in the playoffs. The Bengals won by three again. And then the Bengals lost by three in the playoffs. I know the prevailing logic right now is the Chiefs can't be stopped. I totally get that. You know, they'll win by 50 points every week. They might even get Brown back for week two. No T. Higgins. Joe Burrow stinks early in the season. But to be fair, the, the Chiefs were a literal toe away on Isaiah Likely from allowing that game to get tied and then Harbaugh going for two and then losing it at home in regulation last week. Right? So, like, let's not pretend that just they're going to rout everybody. And this is just less of a matchup thing and more of the thing of like how football works if you've been around it long enough. Mahomes is the GOAT. So is Andy Reid. But their history against the spread as sizable favorites isn't great. And Joe Burrow's history against the Chiefs, he's 3-1. Every game has been a three-point game. Give me the Bengals plus six here. Going to be a fun game to watch no matter what. But I think the Bengals have to bounce back after last week's <laughs> terrifically bad performance against the Patriots. So they're going to leave a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths. They're going to say, there's no way I'm betting the Bengals. But that, if that's the case, doesn't six points seem a little bit short for how bad they were last week and being without T. Higgins probably? Doesn't six points seem, doesn't that seem to be telling us something? I don't know. Just the way I see it. Steelers are three-point favorites at the Broncos. Maybe this is our gross pick of the week. Could be. Could be the Packers too. We'll have a gross pick of the week every week. I like that. Look, it didn't work out for us. Those did not work out for us last week. But the Broncos is three-point dogs at home in altitude actually makes sense here. I think some of you guys are going to nod in agreement. Some of you may be, you know, throwing up in the trash can. But I think it makes some sense. Mike Tomlin, we know he's the man when it comes to covering the spread as a dog last week in Arizona. And Kirk Cousins clearly wasn't right. Who knows? But he's a road favorite in Denver, and I just don't like it. First off, George Pickens, hear me out. This is my analysis on this game. George Pickens is the only reliable pass catcher on this team. Outside of that, it's like Van Jefferson, Calvin Austin, Pat Fryermuth, nobody that scares you. And Pickens is really good too. But if I'm Vance Joseph, I'm just sticking Patrick Sertan on George Pickens and making these other creative player receivers beat me, right? Like that's what he did last week against Seattle and they have other great players. Like Tyler Lockett, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. I wouldn't say great, but, you know, he's good. And Metcalf did nothing at all. Nothing. In, in a situation like this, how would you not just stick Sertan on, on, on Pickens and, and, and force Justin Fields, who ex is expected to start, force him to go elsewhere? Just, just eliminate Pickens from the game. Freeze out Kawhi or let Ka do the Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard used to freeze out the opposing best player and let everybody else try and beat try and beat him justin fields is the x factor with his ability to run but i think it'll be easier to account for justin fields if you're taking pickens out of the game i expect an ugly game too that's why we're going denver plus three at home also under 37 doesn't look bad at all i know it's a super low total under 37 what are you talking about Dave? but i think it actually makes some sense like could you not see a a 17 14 game a 20 to 14 type game here Either way, insanely low total, but it's hard to see where the scoring is going to come from when, when this Pittsburgh defense is also very good. Give me Broncos plus three and under 37. Bears at the Texans. Texans laying six, 45 and a half point total in Houston. Sunday night football. Kalen Williams was pretty bad in his NFL de de debut, but that's not really surprising, is it? Uh, and the offensive line is, is in question after week one too, but that's probably as bad as we're going to see this unit operate all season. I think that's fair to say. They didn't have they didn't have an offensive touchdown and they won. Still, Williams is going to be operating under the bright lights Sunday night primetime football game just one week after that. And he'll likely be without one of Chicago's top ex expected top playmakers in Roma Dunze. CJ Stroud and the Texans on the other hand didn't have a single primetime game last year, but a lot can change in one season and now their offense is even more loaded than it was a season ago so the defense did have some lapses last week no doubt about that they just got lucky with anthony richardson missing them uh, missing mitchell deep twice i expect to see scoring in this one though uh, i like the over more than anything else at 45 and a half and i lean houston at minus six because we're still talking about a, a fine-tuned offense a fine-tuned machine against the rookie making his second career start on the road in primetime, Houston minus six. 
Finally, we close it out with the Falcons at the Eagles. 46 and a half point total. Eagles laying six and a half. People can finally stop talking about, oh, Saquon Barkley will be in a bit of a timeshare with Kenneth Game. I hammered and and because I didn't have a Friday video, but in the Discord and you know, all of the alerts, if you're if you're in the Discord, if you download the odd shop app, everything goes straight to your phone. So you get push notifications for every single play. I hammered every Barkley over. Rushing yards, receiving yards, 100 plus yard game at plus 425 because I'm thinking there's no way you pay this guy to not use him. And they used him. He played 80% of snaps, touched the ball 26 times. Kenny Gainwell was a distant afterthought. The only time he really played was when Barkley caught a stinger or whatever it was late in the first half. They got creative with Barkley using him, you know, uh, on uh, in, in the red zone on that pass, that uh, touchdown in the end zone. So again, we have Saquon Barkley. This is what I said last week. Saquon Barkley, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard for that matter. And then you have Jalen Hurts, who didn't even play well at all last week, and the Eagles still put up 34. Makai Becton on the offensive line, cast off, who's been pay, getting play, playing for peanuts now after leaving the Jets. Even he had a great game because Jeff Stoutland is the best offensive uh, line coach in football. I, I I don't know, man. You look at you look at Cousins. He was rustier than I thought he'd be. He couldn't play on his back foot. He was spiking a few balls. Clearly a problem. And I can't understand why Drake London was so underutilized. You think Arthur Smith has gone, things change. They didn't. But this team has a ton of pieces and a good offensive line as well. So I, I don't think they're going to be scoreless here, clearly. And Philly's defense had some showed some huge holes on Friday, both on the ground and through the air. So if we're going three plays here, go over 46 and a half. I think the Eagles score. Give me over 26 and a half there getting in under that key number of 27. And I'll lean Eagles six and a half because Kirk Cousins, not only against the Eagles, but Kirk Cousins in these primetime Monday night games, historically has been very, very bad. Appreciate you guys watching as always. Hey, hit that thumbs up, subscribe before you go. Remember 50% off everything, the premium discord, Tales by Odd, that's what it's called by the way, Tales by Odd Shopper, where you can download it, like I said, and get everything straight to your phone. But there's a premium discord that you can get in on top of that is why if you're wondering that's how it works but link in the description to that bet 365 have a great week guys we'll see you back here for the next one peace